tonight, I'm excited uh, to announce Timothy is with us from Uganda. I mean, what a privilege, right? What a privilege. And uh, he's going to come up and share his heart tonight. And, and so please take notes because I just I believe sometimes it's not what the person's saying that you take notes on. They're talking to you and God goes, you know what, this and this and this. Revelation knowledge comes when preaching is going on. So you should always have a pen ready. Yeah? That's right. All right. And so Timothy is from Uganda, uh, Timothy Kukuza, and his wife is not here with him, but um, maybe next time, right? Maybe next time we'll, we'll have that. So if you're ready to come, Timothy, you, you come on up and, and uh, share the word. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good evening, church. How are you? Good. <laughs> I am happy to be here with you. I am Timothy Kakuza. Americans call me Kakuza. But that's right. No problem. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I'm your brother from Uganda. How many of you know where Uganda is? Wow. <gasps> okay. <laughs> that is so good. Anyway, I want to bring greetings from Uganda. Uganda is in Africa. We are just on the shores of Lake Victoria the biggest lake in the world with fresh water. Mm, that's something. Fresh water. <laughs> I want that word. Um, I am married to Jennifer for the last 27 years. 20, I've said 27. Good. I want to make sure you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, we have got three daughters and one son. Our daughter got married, one of our daughters got married last year in August. And our second daughter is just getting married on next month. And uh, I'm about to get another cow. When you give out a daughter, they give you a cow. How does it work here? What do you get? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm about to get another cow. And uh, I've got another daughter. I expect another cow. And uh, when my son will get married, then I shall give one of the cows back to the other family. And then we shall remain with others. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am blessed to come to know you through uh, our sister Mary Reliefs. Uh, I came to this area about five years ago. And I was introduced to her pastor at New Life Church. And we've been developing relationships since then. God has blessed me this time to come to know Mary and Pastor Riz. It has been a big blessing coming to know them. People with big heart. I think you are so blessed to be pastored by those people. Can you say thank you, Lord, for our pastors? Thank you, Lord, for our pastors. And I want to ask you to always remember them in your prayers. Amen? Amen. Always remember your pastors in your prayers. 
never forget to pray for your pastors. And always remember them. Not even, not just in your prayers, but also, you know, the Bible speaks that they deserve a double honor. They do what? They deserve a double honor. So as you remember them in your prayers, also remember them. Whenever you get a paycheck, don't forget your pastor. Is that right? I don't know whether I've started where I would start. But uh, the Holy Spirit may be as led me to say that. Amen? Ah, I'm from Uganda. Uganda has got many things. And um, God has helped us to be of help to the children. And we've been doing this for the last 20 years. Uganda was hit by the AIDS scourge, and many people were dying. You could find very young men, 13 years, 14 years, being the head of the family. You could wonder where the world was going. Many people were dying. I was 28 by then. And we started taking care of the kids in our house. One by one, we ended up having 25 children in our house. Have you ever imagined having 25 children in the house? We had a kid in every corner of the house. And you know what happens next. There was mess everywhere. I always tell people that we didn't do this because we had a lot of faith. We did this because we found ourselves in a situation compelled by the Holy Spirit to help the children. And when we are doing this, we found that there is no way we could get out of it. The more we are saying probably we should stop with this, the more kids we got. We had to trust God. We had to pray. We, saw God, we have seen God through these years doing miracles, bringing you food from nowhere. Did you read about that scripture in the scriptures where uh, Russia was on the side and the leavens, the birds brought food to him? We had a situation where we didn't know where to get lunch. When kids have got lunch, you don't know whether they will get dinner. When they have dinner, you don't know whether they will get lunch. But God was faithful. God provided and he has been providing. Today, we have got 674 children. I always look at these kids And the question comes to me, how do things be done? One thing that has really come to my heart is knowing that with God, everything is possible. With God, everything. Everything means everything. Amen? Everything means everything. 
And with God, everything is possible. Can you imagine I'm here today? I didn't have this in plan. I never planned to be at the bridge on this Saturday. But with God, everything is possible. I didn't know Pastor Mary. Not even his name, not even his address, not even his church. A church. But with God, everything is possible. He's a God who can open a way. And no man can shut that door. He's a God who can say yes. And no man can say no. Amen? Through these years, we've been taking care of children. I've seen God helping us. Moving mightily. And whenever I travel, I encourage people. Letting them know that if you believe God, if you trust God, if you give your troubles, your problems, your challenges, if you give them to God, God is faithful enough to help you. David once said, I have grown and I'm an old person now and I have not seen the righteous being forsaken. God will never forsake us. Neither will he leave us. When things look like you are at the end and nobody seems to be like on your side, I just want you to know that God is always on your side. Hallelujah. I would like to read a scripture in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verses 11. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 11, the Bible says like this, I will increase the number of the people and the animals living on you. And they will be fruitful and become numerous. I will settle people on you as in the past. And I will make you prosper more than before. Then you will know that I am the Lord. then you will know that I am the Lord. In the King James Version, it says that I will multiply upon you man and beast. They shall increase and bring fruit. I will settle you after your old estates and I will do better unto you than in your beginnings. You shall know that I am the Lord. When we become Christians, We start a long journey, a journey of faith. 
we declare a war on the devil. And as we move forward, the devil tries to come to us, telling us that we are nobodies. We can't do anything, and we cannot mount to anything. But God's promises are true. When God says something, he means it. Amen? When God says something, that's what he means. If he says, I'm going to be with you, that's what he means. He's going to be with you. If he says, I'm going to multiply you, that's what he means. He's going to multiply you. He's a God of promises, and his promises, he stands by them. Amen? Here he says that I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to multiply your animals. I'm going to increase you. I'm going to bring a fruit. And you will settle in your old estates. And what I want to remind you this evening is to live a life of expectation. Amen? As a Christian, you have to live a life of expectation. Can you, can you repeat that word? That's very good. You've got it right. Sometimes, sometime I went somewhere and I said, I told the people, we have got 600 chicken. Okay, everybody clapped. <laughs> and then, friends, I'm here, I want to tell you, we need a proper chicken. Everybody looked at me. You have just said you have got 600 chicken. What proper chicken are you talking about? What I was meaning was chicken. Chicken and chicken to them was no difference. <laughs> I said we have got 600 chicken. And then we want a proper chicken. What's that? To them, when I was speaking about the chicken, you know the chicken? Do you differentiate between the chicken and chicken? No. So, my accent. That's why I speak slowly. I want you to get every word that I'm speaking. I don't want you to mean when I was... Was you speaking about chicken or chicken? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, I told them, we need a proper chicken at the orphanage to cook from. Okay. We thought what proper chicken are you talking about? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> anyway, we need to live a life of expectation. Believing God is going to do a better thing for us. Amen. Don't allow the devil to put you down. I want you to believe in your heart that God is, has got a plan for you. Live a life of expecting. You are expecting something. Tell your neighbor, I am expecting something to happen. Hey, tell your neighbor, tell her that I am expecting something to happen. That's very good. If you are sick, what do you expect? 
I expect God to heal me. Amen. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Amen? Amen? When I am weak, I expect God to strengthen me. Yeah. Hallelujah. When I'm poor, I expect God to do what? Make me rich. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I can't allow the devil to put me down. I live a life of expectation. Can you say, I live a life of expectation? Very good. That's what, that's what the Bible is saying here. In verses 11. The Bible says, God is talking to his people and he's telling them that I'm going to do you better than at your beginning. God is willing to do us better. This means every day, every the other day, when you wake up in the morning, what do you expect? I expect God to do me better in this day. Hallelujah. That's why you have to work, uh, you know, expecting God in time to meet you. Hallelujah. You don't work as if... You don't know, you know, you walk straight forward. People may ask you, but we don't see anything. There's no progress in your life. There's no progress on your bank account. There's no progress at your job. Do you have an answer? You may not see the progress today, but I have got God, and I'm living a life of love. Praise the Lord. He's going to do me better. Let me tell you, today you are seeing me like this. Next year, dear, when I come here, I won't be the same. Why? I live a life of expectation. When you look at your kids, your children, don't despise them. God can do a better work in them. Hallelujah. That's why as a Christian, you take time to pray for your children. You know that God's going to do a mighty work in my children. You expect God to do, to take you to and take them to another level. You are a Christian. We Christians, we are living a life of? Every day we are waiting upon our Lord Jesus Christ to come back. But even though it doesn't come back tomorrow, we are going to, have to live in a better life. I'm going to have a better life. Amen? I have got the power and the ability to tell the disease in, on my life, tell them, leave me. You have tormented me for a time. Tomorrow I have to be alive. Praise the Lord. I want you every day to live a life of hope. God is going to do something. God is about to do something. God is about to do something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care about your background. I don't care where you came from. When you become a Christian, you become a new creature. You become a son of God. You are a servant of God. You are in the family of God. You start claiming the promises of God. God has just said, he's going to do us better more than he did in the beginning. He's going to do us better. There is a better deal coming. Amen. Can you whisper to your neighbor, tell her there is a better deal coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is a better deal coming. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's always important to confess positively. 
it's always important to confess positively. Whenever the day comes, thank God I'm still alive. And the reason I'm still alive, Lord, you are not yet over with me. This is going to be a better day. I'm going to have a better day at my job. I'm going to have new customers at my job. I'm going to have new favor. The favor of the Lord is new every morning. Confess that as you go to work. Confess that to your children. Some of us, instead of blessing our children, we curse them. And the reason why we curse them is because even ourselves, we don't expect them to become better. As a grandparent, write a small note to your grandchildren. Tell them I love you and I know you are going to be better children. Men, the things that we can give to our family is identity. Security. Love. God was in heaven. And he waited everybody to be there. And then the voice said, This is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. Obey him. Identity. God wanted all people, you know, to know this is his son. He loves him. What did you tell your children? What did you tell your grandchildren? What do you speak about your job? I've seen many people giving excuses, complaining to everything. Sometimes for us who come to Africa, when we come here and we see people complaining, we just laugh. <laughs> Sometimes we don't speak because we don't have the ability to speak. Because I think the poorest person here is the rich person in Africa. I was telling you, Mary, I stayed in Mary's house. I told him, Mary, if you are in Africa, this is a mushroom. This is not an ordinary house that ordinary people live. You could, you could look for the house, that kind of house in the whole district and you couldn't find one. Amen? If God has given a house, be thankful. Tell him, God, thank you for this house. Because there are so many people who want to have the house like this one, but they don't have it. Amen? Thank him for what God has given you. Be gratitude. Be grateful. Hallelujah. Don't allow. You know that devil wants you to complain about things you have. They look as if they are nothing. And he tells you God has done, has done nothing to you. There is no reason, number one, why you should thank him. Look, what do you have here? Look what your account. How much money do you have on the account? Why should you give him thanks? Have you ever imagined that there are people who go hungry for a night and another night, and another night. Some other people die because of hunger. 
You have got food on your table. You have got food in the fridge. You have got food everywhere. And the devil is telling you that you don't have anything. Shame to the devil. We are going to praise and love our God. And we are expecting God is going to do mighty things for us. Amen. Amen. We shall give praise to God for what he has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should always know that there is a better tomorrow. Don't die when you are still living. The devil wants you to die when you are still living. I don't mind what the doctors told you today. I know some of you, you've had a doctor's visit today. And sometimes when you are coming from the doctor, the doctor tells you things and you come out of his office when you are. <sighs> the doctor's report may be true, but that's not the end of the life. Do you hear me? The doctor's report may be true. But that's not the end of the life. There is reality with God. Amen? Amen? If the doctor says something, it's your duty to confess positively and say, yes, I have heard what the doctor said, but in Jesus' name, I am pronounce it and I am speaking myself that I'm going to be well. I'm going to live the next day. I'm going to see my children getting married. I'm going to get to see my grand-grandchildren. I'm going to live. I'm not dying. I am not dying now. I still have some work to do. Amen? I want you to get serious with this. This is serious business. There is a better tomorrow to every one of us. Hallelujah. There is a better tomorrow to every one of us. In its time, God will do it. God will shift it in its own time. Hallelujah. I want, I want us to realize and I want each and every one of us to focus on the goodness of God. Fix your eyes upon the Lord. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Continue to believe in God. Know that the goodness of the Lord will come upon you. In the book of Psalms 27, verse 13 and 14, it says that I would have lost heart unless I had believed. I would have fainted But the good thing we are believers. It's not time to faint. It's time to be renewed day after day. It's time for us to be renewed as Christians day after day. We should learn to wait upon God. Waiting upon God is a very big topic. But waiting upon God means to be patient. Waiting patiently. With perseverance. Until the Lord 
does something for us. Until the Lord intervenes. Remember when you are alone, the devil wants to attack you. It's your duty to wait upon the Lord. You speak to your soul. Every evening and every morning, you tell your soul, my Redeemer, live. I shall face tomorrow with confidence. Your Redeemer is not dead. Your Redeemer lives. Amen? Encourage your husband. When you see him, he's evaporating. Always encourage your husband. Tell your husband, my husband, the situation looks like this. But I want to encourage you. Our Redeemer lives. Husbands who are here, I want to encourage you. Learn to speak to your wives. When you see them trembling and you know losing courage, speak to them. Tell them, my wife, the situation may not look as good as it is. But one thing we have, our God is not dead. Our Redeemer lives. And then you face tomorrow with confidence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should learn to wait upon God. We should be, learn to be of good courage. And the Lord shall strengthen our heart. Amen. We are not ruled by the things that are seen, which are temporary. We are spirit, spiritual people. We see things in the spiritual world. We should learn to continue joyfully obey the Lord. When we are feel let down, when we are feel that we are disappointed, we have a decision to make. To trust God with our lives, with our families, with our businesses. We have to put trust in God. Amen. God will never fail us. He's always with us. If we wait patiently upon him, as he has promised in his word, he's going to do us better. Amen? Can you say, my God is going to do me better? That's what we tell kids in our orphanage. We have got kids from different categories. Kids who have been abandoned. Kids who have been neglected. Do you know something which hurts when you've got a father and a mother and they neglect you? You are not an orphan. But you are badly off more than you are an orphan. Abandoned kids. Those kids need somebody who is going to love them. It's difficult to love these kids better than their mother and father, how they could love them. But they need to be in somewhere where somebody cares. In the orphanage, you have got neglected kids. They abandon the kids. The orphans. Kids from vulnerable homes. I was talking to your pastor. I want, him, I want her and her husband to come to Uganda. Will you send them to Uganda? I have to ask you, will you send your pastor to Uganda? Yeah, pray for, pray with, praying with her and uh, supporting her to come. Number one, I want, I want them to come to see 
what we are doing. Because I told Mary that when I met their pastor, I felt, you know, our hearts, my heart, getting intertwined. Today, I had to ask Mary, I told her, I feel I have to go to World of Life on Sunday. I had to cancel a program somewhere where I was going next Sunday. Because of that kind of I want them to come to speak to our leaders, our pastors. I want them to come to do a revival meeting. And anyway, to strengthen the relationship in Christ. Amen. I would also like you to come with them, if you can. The invitation is open to all of you. Amen? But anyway, I, I, we are going to see a video in a few minutes. And um, these kids, what we tell them, that there is a better future for you. Amen? There is a better future for you. You may have been neglected or abandoned or your history may be negative, but there is something better for you. Amen? Join us in your praying and join us with your support. May God bless you. Let us see the video. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the cause of orphans, fight for the rights of widows. Uganda's recent history includes civil war and two brutal dictatorships, as well as an AIDS epidemic that left many children orphaned and vulnerable. One of the villages greatly impacted by the AIDS crisis was Katozi, a remote fishing village in the southeast of Uganda. This is where we serve. We'll pray for heaven's to break. In 1995, with the AIDS crisis at its peak, one couple felt that God was calling them to Katozi with a vision to see this community transformed by the power of the gospel. Timothy and his wife Jennifer arrived in Katozi and planted a church. Their vision was to show the love of Jesus to their community in a holistic way. They began to take orphans and vulnerable children into their home, many of whom had never been educated. They established a school, and as the school developed, they realised that there were many poor children in the community who were homeless and couldn't afford to go to school, so they started an orphanage for these children. From the initial 25 kids they took into their home, the number has grown to more than 500 kids in the school and over 200 being housed in the orphanage. They have also seen the need in the nearby village of Mumbali, 
there was no school available, so they started a school with 80 kids who describe themselves as God's chosen generation. Even though God has greatly blessed and grown the work in Potosi, Timothy and Jennifer continue to face challenges. Providing food, accommodation, education and medical care for a large number of children is expensive, but not impossible. We believe that God has called church to celebrate, communicate and demonstrate the love of Jesus to our world. One practical way we want to do this is by supporting the work of Timothy and Jennifer in bringing change to Katozi and surrounding villages. We can help by giving generously towards the ongoing costs of running the school and orphanage, as well as supporting the various building projects necessary as their ministry continues to grow. Ultimately, we believe that the spiritual transformation is a major catalyst for change. And so we want to support Timothy and Jennifer in sharing the hope, joy and new life that comes from a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The most important thing we do here at our school, at our orphanage, what we do, we preach the gospel to these children because we know these kids, they may be children today. But you know, after some time, they are not going to remain children. They are going to mature. And we believe the seed of salvation, which is planted in them, will really germinate because we've seen it germinating. And that's the motivation for us. What motivates us to move forward with this ministry is the transformation we see in the children. We believe that James chapter 1 verse 27 compels us to action and so we invite you to partner with and Bright Hope World to provide the children of Katozi with care for today and hope for tomorrow. This is why we serve in Uganda. Join us. Heavenly Father, I come before you this evening. I want to thank you for your precious people. These people you purchased by your blood. We were all dead in our sins. But by your love, you redeemed us. We thank you for making us your children and bring us together to be your family. You know these people very well. I have spoken your word unto them. Lord, you told me to tell them that their future is bright. You have a better deal to everyone of them. There is a better tomorrow to every family here. Lord, right now I speak to them. I speak a better life in their lives. I speak healing upon their body. I speak deliverance upon each and every one of them. I speak health where the doctors have said no. I speak yes. Renew their mind. Recharge their body. Give them new strength. Give them good health, Lord. Give good health to their children and their grandchildren. Bless 
each and every one of them. Bless their jobs. Give them favor. Stretch your mighty hand upon each and every one of them, Lord. Let every one of them live to see a better tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. We pray a blessing upon our pastors. Bless our pastors. We speak new life in them. New anointing. We speak revival. A new word that's going to lift us up. Give them courage to take this church to the next level. Save this community and the people surrounding it. Bring many people to the bridge. Bring many people to the world of life. Let your light continue to shine. Lord Jesus, help your children. Bless them, Lord. Strengthen each and every one of them, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit guide each and every one of us. Bless us, Father, in Jesus' name.